Maybe the most attractive thing a man could do is maintain his own living situation. Y'all gotta stop letting these men move in with y'all. If he can't maintain a living situation, he can't maintain a relationship. Yeah. Men will get... I love that. That is such good advice, y'all. I don't think people realize just how many homosexuals there are out there. There's all kinds of diff different kinds of homosexuals for me. Um, since I was in the outdoor adventure world, there's so many climbers. Climbers are big ho homosexuals. Oh my God. There's so many women who've taken in these Peter Pan homosexuals that have ruined their life. Um, my homosexual was not a climber. He was just literally a, 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 a man, like a, an unhoused man. He was cartoonishly homosexual. He was like next level homosexual. <laughs> He was a, he rode the rails for nine years, which means he literally slept on trains and lived out of a backpack for nine years. And I was like, oh, I'm a free spirit. You know, I lived in my truck for a long time doing the nomadic thing, working outside jobs. You kind of have to do that when you work in the out outdoor industry because they don't pay well. So you just follow the work and you live in your car and you know, whatever. It's, it's, just, a, it's just a lifestyle. I always pay my bills. I always paid car insurance, I paid for my phone bill, I always paid my bills, and I never leached off of anybody. But because I had lived kind of this nomadic lifestyle, then I just, I thought that we were the same. We're not the same, y'all. This man was a, a, he, literally a parasite. I'm gonna tell y'all some details that, in hindsight, I can't believe, I'm, I have no shame in this, but some of y'all are gonna be like, oh my God. First of all, I caught this man eating dog food. <laughs> eating dog food we were dog sitting for my friend and um i walked in the kitchen and i caught him like eating dog treats okay it's not dog food dog biscuits and i was like oh my god what are you doing he's like oh have you never tried them they're great when i rode the rails we used to eat these all the time <laughs> everything was like when i rode the rails <laughs> it reminds me of my grandpa I was like when we were a kid i rode a donkey to school anyway he also apparently did not brush his teeth one day, I just kept thinking that we just brush our teeth at different times. Y'all, I can't believe I'm telling you this, but why not? Maybe you will feel less crazy and less silly and, and, and stupid and all those things. <laughs> because I'm thriving now, y'all. I'm doing great. But I just want you to know how far I've come because this man, <laughs> I taught, I, <laughs> I was like, by the way, when are you brushing your teeth? Like, where's your toothbrush? And he's like, Oh, I don't have a toothbrush. I, I use my finger, my finger in dirt. Uh, I was like, what? Okay. So then now as somebody, I, you know, I worked it out. We're bound, right? I led backpacking trips. So one of the ways that we clean things was, you know, you, you use dirt as an abrasive when you're washing your dishes just to get the food off of it. And then you would use soap and water, but you use dirt as an abrasive, like rocks and stuff. So I, this is like how you will start to justify everything. I was like, oh, maybe he's just using the out outward bound approach to his teeth. <laughs> Either way, I was like, no, you like that. I put my foot down and I was like, you can't touch this mouth. And like, I'm surprised this man did not give me so many diseases. But he sure tried. Here's the thing, y'all. Um, I did not even invite him into my home. He moved in while I was on family vacation. So even if you don't like make a decision to live together, like i.e. let them move in with you because they usually don't even have a place. And if they do, it's a piece, of, it's crap. Even if you don't have that conversation or make that decision, they'll still move in. They will still find a way to move in. Because I went on vacation and I knew, <laughs> I knew that he didn't have anywhere to stay. He was living in a, he was living in a van <laughs> down by the river. <laughs> Y'all, this is like a joke almost. Living in a van down by the river in Taos with two other cooks that worked with us at this pizza place. And they rotated who slept in the van and who slept out of the van. <laughs> and I was like, you can stay at my place while I'm on vacation. You know, if you need a shower or whatever. He never left. He never left. The one good thing that I did was never let that man pay for rent. Even though that sounds like a bad thing, it's a good thing because I, at least I knew that like it was still my place. But at the end of the day, like it was impossible to get him out either way. <laughs> so it really wasn't. So I don't know. Just don't let them move. Don't let them ever give them a key. Never. Because then when he became physically abusive, 
couldn't get them out. It literally took me calling one of my guy friends to come over and move his stuff out of my place while he was at work. And then go to his workplace and be like, hey, this is one of the only times a man has ever helped me, by the way. Maybe, the, the, honestly, men never helped me in this situation. This is one of the only examples. It's always women who save me. Parentheses. But he went to his work and basically was like, we're going to go get a storage unit. You're not, you're not going back to Melanie's. Well, guess what? Guess who let him back in within a couple weeks? Because, of course, he kept threatening to jump off the bridge. And, other, you know, and then he, uh, he's bleeding from all of his orifices. Like, you know, this is what they do. They always say they're sick or have something going on, some crisis. And then you feel bad because they prey on your pity, which is one of the reasons why that, that you let them move in the begin, to begin with is you feel sorry for them. Hobo schmegzuls. They prey on your kindness. They prey on your codependency, which I had serious codependency, right? Which is why after I got out of that, that's what I had to work on very hard because it's life or death for me. They prey on empathy and pity. All of those things that a lot of times women under patriarchy have been socially conditioned to give too much of. And once you let these men in your house, you will never get them out. I literally had to leave the state of New Mexico and move to California which luckily I was already planning on doing, but I, 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 I could not get him out of my house. I had to move and put the state of Arizona between us to get him out of my house, out of my bed, and out of my life. And then he still kept trying to find a way in. And because of my unhealed trauma from childhood and because of my codependency, I almost let him back. I missed him. This man almost unalived me. He essayed me multiple times. He's the most terrifying human being I've ever been close to. And I'm still suffering. This is, it's been like, I don't know, eight years or more, nine, you know, almost 10 years. And I'm, my nervous system is still messed up from this one man. Please y'all do not take this lightly. These men prey on our kindness, our empathy, our pity, our codependency, and all those things. And if you let them into your home, the one place you're supposed to feel safe, it will take you years to recover from that. The one place you're supposed to feel safe is no longer safe. And also, the home is the most dangerous place for women in general. And a lot of times it's because it started in childhood with our dads, our stepdads, our brothers, our uncles, or whatever. So also, if you have a tendency to let men into your home who are dangerous, you may have a lot of healing to do around your childhood and your origin story or at least I did. Just because they don't have money doesn't mean they're not dangerous. They just have different weapons. Keep them out of your house.